this class we are going to learn students we are going to learn describing objects places and events why do we need to describe object place and event when you are asked to speak anything to describe an event uh, what you have seen to others you need to have an idea how to describe those things when you are asked to uh, describe an object because in our day to day life we describe we we have to speak about many issues so describing object is one issue issue in that describing a place is one so describing events all these plays an important role in our speaking as well as writing so in this uh, third unit we are given a particular topic called describing object places and events so now let us start describing object so it is often necessary for us to know how to describe objects that we have seen to give an effective description you must have an eye for detail you must be a good observer so to describe an object which we have seen you need to have a effective description capacity you need to have uh, what are the objects what are the things you need to keep in mind to describe means first thing is you need to have an eye for detail when you look at some things when you look at an object you need to have an eye means concentration for detail on detail things you must be a good observer the second important point is you must be a good observer you have to be uh, you have to you need to have the what is called um, observing capacity let us see for instance imagine that you have been a witness to a hit and run accident and are being asked to describe the vehicle one more thing students pronunciation v e h i c l e generally we pronounce this as a vehicle but it is a wrong you need to pronounce this as a vehicle not vehicle vehicle remind this make sure keep it in your mind so ask to describe the vehicle involved how would you describe it what would be the key factors to include the make of the vehicle the color the number on the number plate etc so when you are asked if you are asked to describe an uh, a thing uh, that you have seen a hit and run accident and you are asked you are a, you have become an eye witness for that and you are asked to describe the object what is that car which has hit and run so what are the things you should keep in mind to describe that you need to see the make of the vehicle what is the make of the vehicle and the color of the vehicle and the number on the number on the number plate and many things you need to tell so your ability to describe the vehicle would depend on several things so to to describe that vehicle you have to think about many things your ability to describe depends on many things what are those things your memory your power of observation your ability to use the right vocabulary and so on so your memory is important your power of imagination your sorry not imagination your power of observation your ability to use right vocabulary all these helps you in describing an object now let us see what are few things which you need to now they have given one object to describe we'll see it as an example let us now look at a description of a common kitchen gadget an oven it's not oven it is an oven so let us see they have given one description of oven so let us see that an oven is a device used for baking grilling and heating food we can use it for baking cakes toasting bread grilling sandwiches and so on it is an electric device it generally has a see through glass door to view the food being baked or grilled there are heating elements at the top and bottom they are controlled by a thermostat to provide uniform temperature inside the oven there is a wire grill inside the oven sometimes a crumb tray is also provided uh, to catch the crumbs or drippings that might fall while baking or grilling the glass door is often a drop down front door which gives you easy access to the interior of the oven on the outside of the device there is a knob for temperature control heater indication lights and a time 
So this is the way you need to de describe an object. Now here, crumbs means remaining particles. When you eat also, we say remove, wipe the crumbs, means remaining particles on the mouth or on the plate. Note how the oven has been described here. We started with, see, now we have to see how oven has been described here. We started with what kind of a device it is, first one what kind of a device it is. Then we noted how useful it is. Then we described its part. So first, how what sort of a describe it is, then how useful it is. Then we have started describing its part. We made use of structure like the oven is, it has, it is, there is, and there are controlled by, like these sort of structures we have used in describing this object oven. So when describing an object, we speak about the appearance. So you have to remember in your mind and you have to remind us that when you are describing any object, we speak about the appearance, the parts, the function and the usefulness of the objects. We generally use the simple present tense to describe object as we have discussed in the last class. When, when we describe, when we are asked to describe anything, we generally use a simple present tense. So however, if we are talking about the things we have seen in the past, we can use simple past tense. So uh, generally, almost all the cases we take help of simple present tense to describe any object or speak about anything. But if you are asked to speak about any past event, happened event, that time you can take help of simple past tense. For example, the car had a dusty windscreen and a cheap number plate had it means you are you are talking about a past description so you have used some past perfect tense there description of an object also requires us to focus on shapes materials and textures shape of an object you need to focus material what is with what material it is made you need to focus and what texture texture means thick or thin or smooth or hard is the material glass, wood, stone, etc. Is the, is the texture rough, smooth, grainy, etc. Is the surface glossy, opaque, transparent, etc. So you, when you are describing an object, you need to be very careful regarding that. First, you should be a good observer. Then you should have an eye for detail. Then you should uh, know, first you should start with what kind of a device or uh, thing it is. Then you should know, describe, you should uh, talk about the appearance, then the parts, then the function, then, then comes uh, uh, other elements which are present. So try to present it in simple present tense. And if it is past event, present it in the simple past tense. So you need to keep in mind one more thing. You have to know about the shapes. What shape is it? What material is it? What texture? Shape means color. Is it in a, um, a round shape, a rectangle shape? What material? Um, is it used hard material, light material, textures, rough, smooth? All these things you need to keep in mind when you are describing an object while writing as well as while speaking. That is important thing. Uh, at times, uh, you may have to describe larger objects like structures and buildings. Describing a structure when um, uh, requires to key, uh, a keen sense of observation and a good vocabulary. Sometimes uh, this small sort of things you can easily describe, but some other times you may be asked to describe a big building or a big structure. Then you need to have a keen observation and a very good vocabulary to describe to describe on a big structure or a building. Now let us see a few clues for that. When describing a structure like a building or a monument, we usually describe these aspects. You should keep in mind when you are describing a big structure, big monument, you should have this in your mind. First thing, the shape, what shape, the object, what shape the building is. Is it a round one? Is it a tower like? Is it a flat, angular? All these things you should keep in your mind. Second one, the material. Is the building or structure made with stone or sand, glass, concrete, wood? And the other one, the texture. Is the building or uh, structure or the monument made with rough texture, smooth texture or sharp? 
and the other one the surface a uh, transparent surface glossy surface or opaque surface and features like arches it has an arch or it has a minars it has a minarets it has a pillars domes and the other one details like carving paint ridges all these things will help you um, in describing a very big objects we have learned what is describing if you want to describe what are the things you need to have if it is a small object what are the things you need to keep in mind and if when you are describing a big object like structure of a building monument you need to have the points which we have discussed now now uh, uh, this is about the description uh, uh, that is uh, which we, that uh, you need to keep in mind in doing the description of an object now now we have describing places what is that so we have seen object now we are going to see place what is that a good descriptive writing about a place helps us see the place even if we might not be able to go there ourselves so when you are describing a place this is very very important why because when you are unable to go there also if some people describe a place it should be in a position to make them understand what really the place is so like that we need to describe a place especially it does so through the use of powerful sensory images when can you do like that means when can you describe so good means when you have the usage of powerful sensory images by watching by observing each and everything if you can produce it uh, in a sensory way everyone can understand a good description can create a positive or a negative impression of a place in your from your description itself people can find out uh, can uh, make an impression of a positive impression or a negative impression about the place the starting point for a good description of a place is close observation when can you good when can you be in a position to describe a good uh, give a good description of a place means when you are a close observer if you can observe closely pay attention to every minute aspect minute means very small you have to pay attention to very small events or small things in the in that place also so what are those means where the place is what the buildings are other structures they look like what the star attractions are what makes that place special what makes that place disgusting so you should be in a position to speak about good as well as bad what the star and um, include visual means you should be in a position that you should include visual means what you see auditory what you hear olfactory what you smell and gustatory what you taste images so you in when you are describing a place you need to use all these things first one you should have powerful sensory images then you should create a positive or negative imp uh, impression of a place only you can create a positive or negative impression of a place because in your through your description only people will come to know what is that about so you should be very careful towards minute aspect also about the place about the surroundings what is it famous for all those things you should so when you are doing it you should involve yourself like visual you should include your visual visual means what you see and you should include auditory what you hear there when you went to that place what did you hear from that and olfactory what you smell smell means how the climate was how the uh, different things made there and gustatory what you taste taste means what you uh, feel there did you had some good things delicious things to eat so these are the things you should keep in mind when you are describing a place here is a sample description of a place let us see that one sample description the sound of children riding on a ferris wheel we call ferris wheel and screaming in excitement is what caught our attention first as we were still approaching the fair grounds we were just about buying our tickets and beginning to appreciate the right of colors at the entrance with the display boards with display boards balloons festoons and banners when a 10 foot man appeared at the gates to welcome us well with his tall clown hat he appeared much taller he bent down a little from his seat 
still to shake hands with us. Facing the entrance at about a couple of feet was the cotton candy machine, whirling away and producing one of the most attractive eats of the fair. This stall had a long time of, sorry, long line of kids and adults impatiently waiting in line for their turn to feel the cotton candy quickly melt in their mouth, uh, having the sweetness to enjoy until the next munch. This is a beautiful description of a fair, which includes images of sight, like beginning to appreciate uh, the colors with the display boards, balloons, festoons and banners and sounds, Paris wheel and screaming of excitement and taste. All these things we could see in this description. So when you are describing things, you should be in a position to describe like this, using your uh, what you heard, what you see, what you taste, what you uh, feel. All those things you need to mention when you are uh, describing uh, and uh, place, which is very, very important.